unanimously. Next item is the Development Services Quarterly Report. Uh, that starts on yeah, 121, and there's a recommended motion on page 127. Remover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Cordover and seconded by Councillor Mitchell. Councillor Cordover. Thanks very much, Mayor. So um, we are looking at the Development Services Quarterly Report. I think the main takeaway message, which is quite interesting, is that developments are on the up and up. Planning permits applications over the past six years are, are going a lot. So as of November of this year, it's 716 for the month. Uh, and compare that to November of 2015, it was 466. So there's an ongoing development, and I think that's a testament to the fact that Kingborough is a, is a great place to live and work and, and um, enjoy recreation, but it also is a testament to the need for our constant vigilance of developing infrastructure and services and making sure that we don't leave anybody behind in the um, transition to a, to a larger municipality in terms of population and, and building you know, urban, urban development. And of course the environment is a, a massive issue that we need to complement contemplate at every point uh, as we embrace development and economic activity. So what I thought I would do, um, rather than listening to me talk through it, is to ask Miss um, Tyler Moore for her commentary on it and also to thank her for all her hard work on this report. Um, through you, Mayor, is a commentary just about development progress or activity in development services? Both. Um, so, yes, as pointed out, the applications continue to rise um, and we have exceeded, we've gone well past that, um, that number for the total of last year, 723, um, already to date. And we've still got, I think it is, eight business days left. Not that we're counting down. Um, this only reflects the planning permit applications. Obviously, there's a number of others. Um, something that has decreased slightly is the subdivisions, which we haven't reflected here, um, just for not cluttering up the report. Um, but certainly um, continuing to get a lot of development in the number of dwellings that we've got. We did have the Planning Institute um, awards and conference this year. It had to go online because of COVID. Um, they still had some really great presentations. And obviously, we encourage our staff to continually grow and learn in the industry and be part of that industry by attending that, so they did that. We also had two nominations and one award recipient for those awards, which is great. We nominated for Young Planner of the Year, Dashini Bangura, and um, Mary McNeil had put in her student project because she's one of our staff who was finalising her master's degree at UTAS, um, and she won that award for a great um, project about um, tactile urbanism, and the project entailed um, having a park in day, meaning that you occupy parking spaces with a pop-up park. Um, and it's something we would like to do at Kingborough. We did talk about doing it this year, but just um, due to busyness, unfortunately, we couldn't deliver it, but we are looking at pos uh, possibly taking part in that next year because it is actually a national um, project by the Planning Institute of Australia and other industries as well, which um, will be really great. So we could either set it up in our main street or... As we know, we are pedestrianising many of our um, areas through the Transform Kingston project. So it's certainly, certainly um, in theme with that, so it's really good. The um, building and construction industry bill, um, we've gone through that. You've obviously um, passed the two policy amendments to change those time frames. Um, it does make things a bit busier. It takes a lot of work for us also to prepare the back end of the software programs that we we have to do, writing all the additional letters. Um, there's a fair bit of um, background work that has to go into these changes, but we're there. We are still waiting for the industry um, of TAS Networks to give us uh, details about what they want referred to them. So um, I think it's a great change that they've done it. So currently in planning applications, you refer certain applications to TAS Water so that they can build the infrastructure and so forth. But TAS Networks was never referred to, which is odd. Um, they've also rectified that, um, except for they've just done the wording that if, if planning officers think that it may affect their infrastructure, then you should refer it to them. But as, as we are not electricity experts, um, we are waiting for them to give us a list of what they should or shouldn't be referred to them. 
and this will hopefully help them forward plan to deliver the services to our community that we expect. Um, so that's good. The government stimulus package, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the grants that have been offered. They've both been extended but have been reduced in part. Um, and we are seeing um, an increase of applications come in for that um, and it does come with a um, heightened stress from some of the applicants because they're really wanting to um, take advantage of those government grants, understandably. The Huntingfield State Government Residential Development, um, I believe that the General Manager may have informed, um, so we've already got the application, I can't recall in this report if we'd had the roundabout, yes we've had the roundabout, we've received the roundabout and this week, no last week, we met with the applicants who are looking to lodge the subdivision, the subdivision will be in four stages, um, so they won't apply for the whole estate, it'll be broken up to four stages and um, they are looking to lodge that shortly and there are some, um, they're still waiting on some other additional reports and information to be able to submit that. The Department of State Growth Park and Ride Development applications have both been received, so that's the hunting field one which is essentially formalising the um, existing park and ride that exists up there and the other one is on Browns Road where I believe um, that a number of Tradies Park in that area as it is. I don't know if I'm actually unfamiliar with whether there's commuters that park there or not, um, but certainly they, they're both um, in progress for assessment, which is good to see that. The local planning provisions, um, that's the new planning scheme coming to the planning scheme. We had our post lodgement meeting um, sometime after that meeting they gave us the written um, correspondence with that, so at the meeting we just basically discussed the essence of what they were after and what they were looking for. Um, but it's not a it's not a post conference to consider the actual merits of what we're proposing. Um, it's just more they're making sure that we have all the elements that they are required to be able to say move on to the next phase. And we're hoping to get that um, response back to them early next year. And then we will wait from there to see if we have more conferences. And it's, it, chances are we will because lots of the other councils do. I think you know, some councils have had up to five post lodgement conferences. Um, so it's only after all that is finalised that we would then progress to the public notification of the draft planning scheme um, and as we've indicated before we've really developed a strong consultation um, document for how we're going to do that and how we're going to deliver it um, which we will run the councillors through when we get closer to the time because I think if there's too much of a lag of time it's, we'll just have to revisit it. Um, but of course if councillors have questions about that um, we could always answer it and we are continually answering questions of the members of the public who contact us regarding the new planning scheme. Then we have a series of planning scheme amendments, Kingston Park specific area plan. Um, we're just waiting for the final decision from the planning commission. That hearing was um, 24th of November. We expect that it is likely to just come through um, following that. We have the um, correction of the incorporated documents section and we're just waiting um, to hear whether there'll be a hearing for that or not, but there were no sub submissions, so there's not really a need for a hearing unless the TPC wants to ask us particular questions. The planning review update table is at the end, and the planning appeals update. So we've had actually quite a lot of appeals um, lodged by either, uh, mostly by neighbours, um, but most of them have been resolved during the mediation process, which is good. Mediation process can be, you know, there's a lot of work in preparing, just responding to the re applications for appeal, and then the <coughs> there's often a meeting on site um, for mediation to see if it can be resolved, to see if there's a, something that people um, agree to. Um, we do have some instances where there's where there's very little basis for the appeals um, as well, and they get they have been withdrawn. And naturally, um, as Planning is busy, building and plumbing are very busy as well. So there's always a lag time at the um, peak of applications as they need to get through the process and then lodge their building applications. Um, and you can see in the chart there the um, number of statutory inspections, plumbing and building applications. Um, it is, it is um, less for these years, but the numbers, if you actually look at the numbers, the, there's very little difference. And we expect the peak from... Um, the later part of this year to be seen early next year at those building applications. 
And of course, again, because they're trying to get those grants, they need to get those building applications in place so they can get their contracts signed. Um, the chart obviously doesn't show all the work that the building and plumbing department do. Um, a lot of it is to do with compliance and the same, the same with the planning team as well. There's a lot of compliance work, which can be a huge amount of work um, and correspondence with neighbours and the, the um, people have caused the offence and things like that, um, which isn't reflected in there. And in the attachments is the planning review update as well. Thank you so much. That was really comprehensive and really appreciated. So I've got... Um well, firstly, I also want to congratulate Dashini Bangara and Mary McNeil, Mary McNeil on their winning of the awards uh, with the Planning Institute of Australia. It's just a wonderful, wonderful achievement, and um, they should be very proud. Um, we, I had a question, actually, about the government stimulus package for the building industry COVID-19 recovery as it relates to housing affordability and rental shortage. Is the expectation that as these grants ease off, um, there will be fewer planning and development applications? That's the first question. Ms. Tolomon. Sorry. Um, through you, Mayor, I, am, I don't think that I'm qualified enough to make a prediction about what the impact on the um, rental industry is. Um, based on the trajectory of applications, I'd say we will continue to see an increase. Um, something else that we can note from our area is knowing um, land releases through the big subdivisions. Um, so Whitewater and Spring Farm have still got stages left to release that'll have an impact and obviously the hunting field um, development, although that's going to be some time off till they actually land release. But given the size of those allotments, a lot of those are going to trigger the need for planning permits as well. Okay, so I guess it, it sounds like it remains to be seen if the easing off the, the grants, it, it may not actually result in fewer development applications. I mean, the growth trajectory in Kingborough is a steep one, so it seems like irrespective of grants or no grants, that it will continue to rise. Um, Keeping that at the forefront of mind, I note that this week the Mercury has been reporting that a report is going to Hobart City Council, um, a, a report on how to cap the number of short-stay accommodation properties in Hobart is um, being sought by Hobart City Council following revelations that the housing shortage has returned to pre-COVID-19 levels. When and if that takes place, will there be learnings? Is that something that the planning department here at Kingborough will be looking at? That Relevance, doesn't appear is that to, in the report? Yeah, it's not in the report, Councillor Cordova. Okay. My next question is about um, Kingston Park specific area plan. It says that council's now waiting on the final decision from the TPC. Is there, um, do you anticipate any like issues with that or it's going swimmingly? Um, through you, Mayor. No, I don't anticipate anything. This is the second hearing and there wasn't um, a lot that came out of the second hearing that wasn't heard at the first hearing. So I think it should go through. That's great. And my final question is about, with the building and plumbing and that chart that shows this, um, there's always like way more statutory inspections. Um, yeah, is there anything to be alarmed about by that? I mean, why, yeah, is there, why such a difference? Um, through you, Mayor, the statutory inspections, so in building and plumbing, the building, industry, the building act um, used to require that council did all building permits and building permits inspections, and that was given away and privatised. Um, councils, some councils continue to do it, and we did continue to do it till 2016. So um, that part doesn't um, create as many inspections, but it's the plumbing inspections that do because you, there's no privatisation of the plumbing industry, which is a good thing, um, and we do all those statutory inspections. So there's often um, at least three statutory plumbing inspections that are required to sign off the, um, that part of those Building Act permits. 